I texted her. Hopefully she joins us or something, but maybe we should start talking in any event and catch her up when she gets here. Uh, so I don't know, Danielle, if you were listening to me and Rafa kind of start to talk about the, the meeting on set, uh, Sunday, the indigenous, the, the Italian Americans for Indigenous People Day meeting, the community networking forum that they hosted. It was cool. There yeah, it, I mean, that's where like the leadership is. It's, it was, yeah. to me, that was like, whoa, you know, like this is where, this is where it's at for Massachusetts, um, at least more on the ground level, not in the, in the legislature. But I mean, obviously they talked about, you know, those bills. Um, yeah, those bills, those five bills that are out there, um, those are like really crucial thing. One of them, one of them has been there for three years, I believe she's. Yeah, they've been reintroducing them, not just three years, but three sessions, which is six years, I think. Okay. So it's, yeah. yeah it's I'm going to get those out. I'm going to share those around as much as I can. I'm, I have already, but I, there's more people I can probably send those to. Yeah. Because like if those, if we, if we change those, then we, we can actually talk about some real fundamental change because then we'll have like a script and narrative to be like, okay, you know, now we have Indigenous Peoples Day here. What does that mean? What does it mean about our history? So then we start talking about foundational change. So, um, yeah, so that's important, I think. Yeah, one of the big asks that they had was for whatever event you're planning, well, they had a couple of things. One is like cross promotion, like there should be collaboration and not competition amongst towns. Mm. So there's, you know, a lot of places are scheduling their events perhaps on the same day or around the same days. And so they were talking about cross promotion and supporting one another across towns. And then also the other, the big ask was incorporate the indigenous agenda, the mass indigenous agenda into your event, like promoting it, sharing it with your attendees, like making sure that that's part of the messaging that you're putting out along with like other stuff that's happening at your event for every town. So that was great. And so there's like links that you can share. I figure if we have, if we have any, we have in person, like those, the festival by the lake and the Oh, what's it called? The like, I don't know, some event that Wakefield Main Streets is putting on um, where we're going to have tables. And I was thinking we could have um, flyers, like one pagers that talk about the mass uh, indigenous agenda with like a QR code or something so that mm -hmm. you can, like go to the the page where you can email your legislators and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah. As a way mm -hmm. to fold that in. <clears throat> What's his name? Um, Mike, I think Mike Barrett uh, is the guy, at least in my, in my district, in the state senate who represents my district. He's supposedly is on top of and supporting the bills. That's as much as I know, um, at least for my area, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, same for us. Our senator is, our the senator that represents Wakefield is like one of the co-sponsors for some of those bills and is very much like in support. Mm. Um, yeah, but certainly sharing sharing at our events, <clears throat> especially for folks who might live elsewhere or like for on the virtual, like on our Facebook page for anyone who's like looking at our Facebook page who maybe lives in another district or whatever. Right. Yeah, I know that that email came through. I don't know if any of you seen it i forwarded it too because i wasn't i didn't see your name on there but um that there's going to be a hearing and it was just moved to next tuesday so that's something that we could do in the, yeah yeah we could do in the near future at least just be like write a letter or you know it's automated too and most people i think that are online will probably do the automated stuff and add a personal touch or not that's fine too at least you know so yeah, i think they had last i checked like a little bit over a hundred out of the 200 goals let of letters yeah yeah we can share that i wonder because i could maybe post that there's this whole schedule of hispanic heritage month posts that i'm supposed to be putting up on facebook <clears throat> for the hrc but i think on in between days i could post like something like that like hey you know submit testimony for this hearing or whatever things things like that yeah, I was also thinking of um, really trying to promote that October 9th. Um, yeah, the March. March. Yeah, because um, it's good because um, there is actually a lot of resistance 
um, to that march and to like Indigenous Peoples Day in general. So like I, I just think of like more people were there supporting it, then it would shift how it would help shift the mindset of some uh, the of those people that are maybe more neutral or maybe think that there's like this chance of there being Indigenous Peoples Day and Columbus Day, you know, maybe they'll lean more towards mm-hmm. Indigenous Peoples Day. So yeah, I mean, I think pushing that event out is something really important. We could add that to the flyers as well. Yeah, um, and I wonder, like I'm planning to go to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It would be cool to post to the HRC page, you know, like a, I don't know, pin some photos or something to the HRC page of, from the event. And can and can we promote that at the Festival by the Lake on October 2nd? Totally. I don't see why not. Yeah, that's perfect timing because then okay. it's the following week. So when is the Festival of the Lake? If this is in Wakefield or? Yeah, the Wakefield, it's a craft fair. So it's kind of unrelated to our issues, but they have nonprofits have like tables along the side. And so we have a table. <clears throat> so we're going to okay. have a bunch of materials out, like both just like telling people what the HRC is and what we do, but then a bunch of stuff for Indigenous Peoples Day and a bunch of stuff for Hispanic Heritage Month. And then like, I don't know, some other stuff too, I think. Okay. So. Yeah, I guess I'll look it up on the town website and get some of the details, but. Wakefield. Yeah. Um, so uh, did you guys get the message I sent um, on the 10th of September with the Indigenous Peoples Day documents and uh, the links as well? Yes. Did Actually, you- now that you're saying that out loud, it's possible that it was my responsibility to forward this to everybody else and I forgot to do it. No, I that's, that's it. okay. No, I was just wondering if you got it. Um, I did get it. Cool. Uh, um, are, is that in reference? Do you think that that's something that we, something in there is what we could print out and put at the table? Is that what you're, what you were thinking, or did it just remind you of that email? Oh, um, both actually. Uh, in terms of printing out, um, what could we print out? I mean. Well, there's that really cool PDF, I guess, that Ma- Matuin put together about the Columbus Day myth. I mean, we could like put that in the packet. I don't see why we, we couldn't hand that out to people. I think that's really like good information. It's like, it's, I mean, it's really brutal. There's a lot of violence on there, but um, in terms of like educating, it's great. Um, they have, you know, citations on there as well. So, I mean, we could, we could print that out and like put it in a packet and make copies and put that on the table as well. Um, I'm just forwarding this to everybody because I forgot to forward it. But yeah, the email that you sent with those materials. Yeah. Yeah, and I also think, I mean, the I wonder, there's got to be one pagers. Like the Mass Indigenous Legislative Agenda website, I bet you has like, um, what do you call it? Um, like press material and stuff like that that you could we could maybe print something out yeah um so there's uh different petitions on there like for italians for indigenous peoples they've got some petitions so i mean i'm not sure how to do the technology but we, we mentioned uh, a qr code yeah right? so i think that's pretty good um we could get a qr code on some of these petitions and people could sign them there um yeah, qr codes for the win man i have just recently been won over to the like just how helpful they are okay um. <clears throat> so okay hold on let me write down something here so we've got we want to promote the march. We want to promote the legislative agenda. We want to have like general information about Columbus and Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, like QR codes for people to um, sign the petitions and learn more. Was there any event that um, is in a neighboring town that we would wanna promote or something that 
was an event that we might want to loop in of something that we're already doing. I mean, I feel like with the suggested reads, if we we'll, if we do a live reading, that's a that's um that's pretty good on top of getting the word out, informing on the second, and then just in between on social media. Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, so there's a bunch of live events and I think also um, like virtual events. They're, they're going to be sending out, Heather from um, Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day is going to be sending out like a Google Doc that has, yeah. or maybe she already did, I'm not sure. I don't think she has yet, no. I... Yeah, she was still like collecting information Yeah. of like all the towns and what their events are. Um, yeah. The hand some of them are like elaborate and amazing like they have like a lot going on um and then the the closest neighboring one is melrose is having two things they're having a film screening that's in person of the coolidge yeah that's right i forget what the movie is don Donland. oh the Donland. yeah the Donland. that's right that's about um the wabanaki uh people from maine vermont new hampshire yeah wabanaki confederacy i should say yeah, the Don Lynn. Um, that's right. Uh, yeah, good, so they're having movie. a film viewing, and then they're also having like a history talk, which I'm, I feel sort of mixed about. So one of the things that Matawi said was, you know, it's like essential to have Native people, Native voices centered in this, like have, like, even if you're only choosing books for a reading, you should be choosing books that are recommended by native people even if you're looking even if you're looking at books that are authored by native authors who's like yeah. even within that spread it's important to be like getting the perspective of native people on which books would be best to choose um and so i'm i, I feel like mixed a little bit about the wakefield um not wakefield the melrose event which is a mm. history talk by i'm pretty sure a non-native person yeah. who's like a white historian who lives in melrose um yeah. so hey nicole um so it's like on the one hand i think it would be valuable because he's a pretty hyper local historian like he really gets into local um what's the word like local manifestations of these things that we always learn about like he did a bunch of research about like home ownership trends for african americans in melrose and stuff like that you know and so it's like on the one hand, it could be really valuable to Wakefield folks to attend that and like learn a bunch of stuff that they probably don't know even a little bit about. On the other hand, you know, I don't know that it's in keeping with the guidance of being, of like centering the voices of Native Americans. So I don't know. Yeah, um, that's right. Um, yeah, this you know, this is just a need to kind of decenter whiteness for sure, um, and. Yeah, so I guess it does have a kind of problematic strand to it. Yeah. Well, is it separate like from the movie screen? Yeah, they're two separate events. Yeah, that's how they do things at the Coolidge Corner. They'll have like a screening and then they'll have like someone talk. I, I've been to one of those before. Um, oh, no, this is in Melrose. This is not at the Coolidge. This is, separate. this is in Melrose. That's, oh, sorry. The Coolidge is in Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, my bad uh <laughs> but yeah i guess you know that's kind of a trend is to hit like the film and so to speak yeah. yeah but yeah it's true yeah they're two separate events so we could also sort of like lean on promoting the film you know if if the history talk is like yeah. or we could i don't know maybe not i was gonna say we could promote the history talk and say like here's the thing to think about this is a talk given by a white man like valuable to learn some history also and critically yeah. yeah um yeah so or, or yeah read critically. so I, I guess what is our goal exactly so i mean we're trying to um accomplish we, we're trying to get onto an, an event here and we're trying to put together things for an, an event is that what we're doing here or are we just kind of doing different yeah. things here and there? I mean, I think we were hoping to do the some book readings. 
Right. So it would be like three virtual, or this is what we were talking about last week. So if we will, if we go right. continue down this path, three virtual readings that would just be like posted on our Facebook page. So it's not really, at least this is what we did last year. We could choose a different way, but last year we didn't do a Facebook event or a live like stream. It was just a video that we posted to our Facebook page. And then, you know, posting other things, you know, links, resources, whatever. So we could do a similar thing or we could try to do it, it differently. And then, yeah, then all the kind of other filler stuff of like cross promoting over their things, making sure we're highlighting the legislative agenda, doing all that other stuff. Yeah. Let's do this. Nicole, did you, wh how, what happened when you tried to contact the Bairds? Um, I'm waiting for Amy to get back. She's on vacation. So Monday, we'll see what, um, she says, because I don't know them and I just feel weird like, oh yeah, by the way, blah, blah, blah. So I feel like we need a, buff, a buffer. To be introduced, yeah. And um, what was I gonna say? Did you, cause I, it's, somebody said last time when we were meeting that Nicole Calabrese maybe knows like another branch of the family. She knows Leonard who lives in, um, I think he's in Wilmington or Winchester. Winchester, I think, yeah. And I was trying to remember if he said he grew up here, but I don't think he did. So, um, yeah, I, I was just talking to her. I don't know why. I'm sorry, this week has been kind of crazy. Uh, let me, I'm gonna send her a note right now, actually. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Okay, so we're waiting to hear back. Still haven't got a hold of the Bairds. This is a local Native American family, Rafa. Who's... Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, um, Daniela told me about them. That's <laughs> right. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Yep. Um, let's see. So there was a bunch of ideas that got thrown around at this meeting on Sunday, and I feel like it was really inspiring my like ideas and thoughts. And I don't know if there's any way for us to pull off anything in the like three weeks that we have. Cause you know, like inviting an indigenous author to do their reading, you know, to read their book. And it could be vir like, it could be, the person could be anywhere, anywhere. Cause they could do it virtually, you know, or, um, yeah i don't know they, like could there be sort of like m moderately attainable things that we could do to um to like make our event i don't know more better so if, if you want to do flyers um so there's a website called Canva, I've never heard of it. I've been I have it. heard of this recently. People keep saying how amazing it is. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of crazy things on there you can do. Um yeah, uh, I would recommend that. Um the flyers you could do. Huh. So I guess we also want to give ourselves like a deadline too for some of these things we're talking about so that way we have something to work on. Um, so, yeah, I think that, and we were today gonna maybe choose the books or try to choose the books from the stuff that I sent out. Have people yeah. had a chance to look at those? Rafa, did I include? Yes. I put you on I'm that? not sure I did because I don't know what books you were talking about. I mean, I have plenty of, of, of books that I know, but, um, but I'm not sure if, I didn't think I got the email. I think I forgot to send it to you. Hold on, let me, you guys talk for a second. Let me find this email and send it to you. Yeah, I read, um, well, I, we have in my work, we have the book, We Are the Water Protectors, and we've read it to our, um, our kids and the parents, and it was very well received. I love that book. Um, and then I listened to a, um, a talk about the other books, about the one that really struck me that i would like to check out is um I can make this promise it just sounded it it was um the talk that I heard just mm -hmm. made me want to read it and then there's a um oh, about the yeah, those, are, yeah. those are my two favorite 
trying to pull up the title um i can't remember it but it it, it was about the um the boarding schools oh yeah that one sounded good too. i actually unplugged my wi-fi so my internet's like really bad <laughs> i'm just going off the cell tower but I, I know i wrote it down somewhere um, uh, when we were alone mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the children. And then Hiawatha and the yeah, and Hiawatha and the peacemaker. That's what oh, I had written down. It's a good story. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's an important one because yeah. Um. Yeah, Hiawatha and the peacemaker is, I think, my like one of my top choices on that list. Um. When you mentioned earlier inviting the authors, do you mean like the authors of those books that we choose to read, or are we going to try and just find any anyone who's part of the indigenous community to to read? Is this something that we might pique um, the Bayard family's interest? Uh, you know, once we get in touch with them, asking, hey, like this is what we're thinking of doing, getting their input, and then see if they want to get involved in that way, or um, yeah, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, like, who, who are we reaching out to to see who can read these books? Yeah, I think that that could be an option for the Bears, depending on, like, what it is that, like, how they would like to be involved, right. like, the thing that would be of interest to them. I think it could be cool. The other idea was more about, like, reaching out to Indigenous authors and saying, would you like to come read your book? Like, mm. at an event, maybe we could, like, um, co-host it with like the library or with the bookstore or something um the problem with that is that i do think we would need to pay the authors. we do have to pay them i would not even want to no. yeah oh yeah ask them to do it for free that just no. let's not do that <laughs> so you know that's a consideration mm -hmm. did we need 90 days is that what Sherry was saying that we need to we need to give notice if we pay people for something? No, that's just to rent space on the common or anything like that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, and I don't even know like necessarily how to go about doing that, right? Like, I don't have like a bunch of native authors like email addresses or whatever. <laughs> I guess you would go through their publishers. But and I think we're too late in it because I'm thinking even when I was doing the um, the author fest at the Greenwood School, it's like three months to kind of get on their calendar, contacting yeah. a publisher and being on the list. Yeah. So fast. Yeah. But I agree, Benny. I think we uh, once um once I hear from the uh, Baird family, once we get in touch with them, it's better to just ask them what they would like to do instead of just saying, hey, we've got these books. Will you read yeah. this instead of, yeah. Um, cool. If they don't, if they're not interested in doing the readings, do we want to still move forward with the readings? And if so, like, who will read them? Like, what's the, you know, how do we think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think we still want Indigenous people to read them. Um, I mean, other than that, we could, you know, people of color, or I mean, people, I guess, well, I mean, we'd have, to, I guess we'd have to keep looking and looking for Indigenous people that do want to read those books, because I think ultimately that's sort of the right narrative to practice. Um, and if they can benefit from it, that's something else that's really important too. Yeah. So payment, yeah. As a you know, after student student who did anthropology, yeah, you know, offering some sort of benefit to the research is always critical. And so, yeah. Um, Daniela, you had a friend that you were like trying to enlist. Yeah. So I, I don't know where exactly she is. I know she was moving from the east to the west coast around this time. So I do want to reach out to her. She is she does have a social media presence. So I just, you know, I know she's comfortable on camera at least. Uh, so I, I do want to ask her like, 
this is something that we would we would love your help with or would you be interested in doing um and yeah i mean to your question of like should we still do the readings if we don't you know if we don't find any readers i feel like we can't say any commentary about melrose's history talk being done by a white man with without being like hey also we have white people reading these stories because we couldn't find anyone so like you know the asterisk there of like we tried we will do better we needed more time <laughs> just um even if we acknowledge it ourselves or it's an audio thing like can we do an audio book where it flips through the pages if it's a children's book it focuses on the artwork um You mean use an audio recording that's already been made? And oops, I think you're frozen, Danielle. Yeah. Um, I think there might be licensing issues with using an audio recording. Oh, can you hear us, Danielle? Maybe not. Anyway, I think there might be licensing issues. I asked the children's librarian about the um like permissions thing like do we have to get permission from the publisher to read the things and she said that as a like not-for-profit entity we get kind of like extra lenience and we can read the the thing since we wouldn't be profiting from the from the um event okay, yeah so that's helpful. But I do think that I wonder if there are licensing issues with trying to use someone else's recorded work. I don't know. Maybe it's the same. Maybe it's the same as the written book, or like a record. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I guess the audio would have to be done by an Indigenous person too, as well. That's something else to keep in mind if it were an audio book. Um, Let's see. Um, okay. Well, so, okay. Sorry, we're, I feel like my brain is like all over the place. Do you all want to think more about which books to choose so that we can hammer that down? Yeah, let's do that. So, people. So there's a couple different, okay, there's a couple different things here. So there's a, a like Google spreadsheet that I made last year when we were choosing the books. Um, and these are all kids books, like for little kids. We read three of them last year, the ones that are like highlighted in green, we already read Frybet, Frybread at the Mountain Space and Bow Wow Pow Wow. But of the other ones, mm -hmm. so I can't remember who said, one of you said Hiawatha and the Peacemaker and When We Were Alone. Mm -hmm. um, I also had the one written down that I think Nicole said, but it, it cut out um, something about fires. Oh, the Firekeeper's Daughter. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a... That's a young adult. Young adult, a, yeah. yeah. Or a teen. It's a young YA book. What is that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if, you know, if, if we have a mixture of, you know, these book readings, but also, and just suggestions, mm -hmm. you know, we could share the cover of the, of the book and say suggested read for IDP mm -hmm. and maybe a little blurb about it. And then that way the yeah yeah the i guess that's the way we would like it too maybe but yeah but the, the short summary um casey's recommendation or like one thing that she mentioned was um to do for the middle school age books which are going to be longer right like they're not it's not a picture book that's like 10 pages long um she said like excerpts what did she say yeah because her her recommendations were not your princess edited by 
Charlie Boy, Lisa Charlie Boy, um, a series of essays by Native American women. So like you could choose an essay, you know, maybe or something. Mm -hmm. um, Indian No More by Charlene Willing McManus and Tracy Sorrell, middle school book. Um, she said, although it's a full book, there is undoubtedly a segment or two that would be perfect, like as a reading. It's a historical fiction. Uh, let's see. And then she said, I can make this promise by Christmas Day. Oh, the author is Christine Day. <laughs> I thought it was Christmas Day. Um, uh, same deal. Like you could like read excerpts maybe. Um, and we are water protectors, like you were saying. Um, so that was her suggestion is to do like, ex if it's a longer thing, do excerpts. Um, and then for the adult piece, we were looking at maybe poems. So know. We Are Water Protectors is a book you can read the whole thing. It's not it's not super long. Okay. It's appropriate for, what uh, age group do you think it's like? It's a, it, I read it to my kind of preschool, kindergarten class. Cool. Um, okay, so of the kids' books, the picture books, I don't know, how do we do this? Do we want to go around and say which ones you want? Yeah, I think we'll do that. Sounds good. Um, Rafa, I, since I just shared it with you, do you feel like you have enough information or like are familiar enough with these titles to like say what you think yeah um so let's do um trying to decide between a couple so i liked um hiawatha and the peacemaker for young young readers young adults that one there um Let's see. You guys already did at Mountain's base, I guess, or someone already did said. Yeah, we did that one last year. That was oh, one. okay. Yeah, Finny, keepers, uh, um, Finny, can you send it to me again? I thought I had it, but I don't see it. I'm trying to pull it up. Here's yeah. the right sheet. Yeah. I don't know where it is. So I just checked YouTube and I have indigenous people reading books, which might be a good thing to fall back on. But we'll have to get permission to push that on our page. I think we can direct people to it, but I don't think we can. Yeah, like we can link to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Yeah, because since it's public, I figured we might be able to share it. Yeah, we did that for uh, AAPI Heritage Month last year. We we like linked to a bunch of like people that we had like communicated with and been in contact with, but they were like, my video is on Facebook. And so we just linked to their video and posted that on our Facebook. Okay. Okay, so Hiawatha and the Peacemaker is one. Did you have any other ones, Rafa, that were? Yeah, it, definitely We Are Water Protectors. We'll do that. Um, because that one... I'm Rain! Sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, I mean, talk about, like, contemporary issues, you know, that because we got, you know, Hiawatha and the Peacemaker, okay, we got, like, history and culture. Historical, right? yeah. And then you got contemporary issues, hmm. you're in water protectors. Um, I mean, yeah, there's just a lot, a lot there. So yeah. Um, and yeah. Nicole, what do you think? Or you're just looking at it maybe. Daniela, what, what do you think? Yeah, I like the, the uh, Peacemaker and, uh, what was the other one? The we are. Oh, we when we were alone. 
yeah, that one, just because I, I feel like, you know, it shines light on a, on an issue that is still happening. Mm. Yeah. That's, and that's that, it. again, where it connects like history and current events. And, and that could, you know, inform a, a later post, you know, right afterwards, you know, like, I mean, the next day where we elaborate on it or vice versa, we explain, you know, we say something historical and then we say, okay, here's like a book reading or, you know, so that way it's paired with education um, as far as like other resources. So we can link to other resources for people yeah. to learn more about it in addition to the book reading. Yeah, and, and links to like, you know, some of the recent current events, like the stuff that was happening in Canada where they unearthed a bunch of stuff. Right. Yeah. And even now, like the Gabby uh, Pinto cases, like there have been over 700 Indigenous children missing over the last 10 years. It averages out to be about six a month. Um, and like there was no public outcry over it the fbi hadn't had one person on their missing case i mean uh, yeah one per one, what a missing person case on their desk from wyoming and all that time but um so it's just some something that we can link even further out um to elaborate Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, that's a really good point, Daniela. Um, in terms of decentering whiteness and talking about white privilege and how even, you know, just this whole discussion itself around just Gabby when it comes to missing and murdered people that just reaffirmed white supremacy and the white narrative itself because there's no, like, interruption or or same emphasis emphasis on indigenous people and or people that are you know separated by their families uh, at the border too. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a colorism and a racism there. So yeah, that's. Mm, we, I'm wondering. Uh, I had an idea, I thought, but it escaped me. Anyway, Nicole, what do you think about the books? Um, I agree. Um, now that uh, we were talking further about the books that uh, Danielle and Rafa, and Rafa suggested, and definitely uh, we are water protectors. I like that book so much because also at the end of the book, it tells people how they can um, help their community and what like little kids, it like gives them like actionable items. So um, I think having like you guys were saying, having some sort of education with the older books and that this book also has the education and actionable items, I think is, um, would, would be, I think it's really good right now because people often just read stuff and then they just move on, but this actually gives you something that you can think about and take further. It seems like there's three can books that, that are, what, yeah? Would you say? I was gonna say, can that be the opening book? <laughs> yeah. We are water protectors. Since it's a little kid one, yeah. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah. Um, oh, I know what the idea that I had was. In terms of linking to other resources, again, coming from what the, the leadership was saying in this meeting that we were at on Sunday, like, it makes a difference whether you are reading, like, an article written by native journalists versus an article written by like some white person at the New York Times covering the same topic, like center the voices of folks of color. So if you're linking to additional resources, Thank like you. we can be linking to either uh, like articles or, you know, whatever stuff, other types of resources, but making sure that we're linking to stuff that comes from native folks. Um, just wanted to like add that caveat to the the um resources that we link people to so i'm thinking okay so we have these three books and we could do all three that sounds like totally great nice if we can get readers you know if we if it feels like good to be able to do three um and i'm do we want to also do poetry 
like a poetry reading as a more adult, like uh, geared, geared towards adults. Casey sent for some poetry ideas, um, a collection called Living Nations, Living Words, which is um, edited by Joy Har Harjo. Is that how you say her name? Um, yeah, and then there was a let's see a collection um a collection of poetry by joy harjo american sunrise so one edited by her and one like where the poems are written by her so she recommended those two which we could also like browse through and choose some stuff if we wanted to share that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Did, oh, me? Oh, there's, um, oh, there's an indigenous author, M. Scott Mumaday, uh, who's another great poet. Uh, he's an award-winning poet, uh, Navajo, so. Can you spell uh, the last name? Yeah, that's, uh, M O M A D A Y. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we are water protectors. I was in the peacemaker. And when we were alone. Um, you know, during this time, it's so funny, just as a side, you know, it's like scouring like YouTube and different websites, looking up um, indigenous writers. And there is so many, so many good books that, you know, it's just not on the forefront. And um, I like the other day, I just like downloaded like three of them in my Goodreads just to make sure it's my next book up. But it's, it's you know, it's just a sad thing that you don't even, like I've never heard of these authors before and I'm just now starting to read, you know, make make it a point to pick authors who are not, you know, in the main mainstream. And I mean, they're excellent books and it just, you know, in school, you don't read stuff like that. And it's just not, it's not good. I don't like that. But anyway, sorry, mm -hmm. as an aside. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm starting to picture if we have these, in terms of the story readings, if we had these readings um, and each could then, like you were saying, Daniela, be accompanied by a post with like additional information and maybe like each of us can pick a topic to like, you know, bring together a couple of links or, or other resources that we could post with it. So like Hiawatha and the Peacemaker is really about like his, a historical era um, um, and maybe links to some like historical resources, something like that. Yeah. Um... I mean, anything on, because that, that story is like the, the, like this central story to the Iroquois people. Um, it's about how they became the Haudenosaunee, how they became the people who built the longhouse, which is really a concept about um, unity and, and governance, uh, self-governance, much of which was uh, borrowed from Benjamin Franklin, actually, who used uh some a lot of their ideas to actually put the a constitution together and the formation of the United States government. Yeah, that's yeah. I was gonna say I think yeah. that that could be an interesting piece to link in, like share a resource about how, like some of the things that we hold most sacred about our form of governance was actually like borrowed from and learned from. Uh, yeah, I guess plagiarized would probably be a better word maybe appropriated yeah it was like appropriated yeah it was like a gift in a sense like the chief kind of said take over on onondaga was like okay are you guys are arguing he was invited to like one of their their meetings in like the 1750s about the albany plane that's where this all originated it was like 
where you guys are arguing, you know, here's here's some form of governments to try this, and eventually filtered into uh, the Articles of Confederation, and then so on and so forth. Um, so it was like a gift, but um, they weren't given any credit for that until 1988, actually, um, when Daniel Inouye actually uh, worked with the Iroquois Confederacy in Cornell University. Um, and the Iroquois presented information and documents, you know, proving the story that this, all of this stuff came from them. And uh, yeah, and so, you know, Congress officially thanked them and recognized it, but it's not really put out in the forefront that this thank you happened, that Congress was like, thank you for your input in the United States Constitution and for the formation of the government. So, but yeah. Um, so, you know what it sounds like to me is you have a lot of information on this topic and I'm wondering if you would be willing to like curate like a little bit of some information that we could post with, along with the reading of Hiawatha and the Peacemaker to like educate people. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I could do that. That's um, fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, like Benjamin Franklin said in like 1754 is like, if those savages to the north of us can create a perfect union, why can't we create a more perfect union? And so that was like the basis for, because like when they were trying to form up the government, they were like looking at examples from Babylon, from Egypt, from Rome and Greece. And he was like, how about the covenant chain up, up in upstate New York? <laughs> they have a whole system there, let's use. And so they invited the chiefs over to talk about it. Yeah, this is all erased from history. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. Um, though the Native Americans can articulate it far better than I can, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, yeah, but that's what I'm figuring is I'm, I'm sure there's stuff out there that we could connect people to, not that you have to like write a thing or whatever, but to connect people to the way that it's already been recorded and already been written. Like, I don't know if the, if the Iroquois have like resources that, you know, I don't know, that are available to the public to read. Yeah, um, they definitely have, let's see. I mean, it's on their website. They have some of the story on their website. Um, there's this organization, it's called Illuminative. Let's see, let me spell that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, this uh, organization called Illuminative uh, created a really cool infographic um, when all that stuff came out about CNN and what's his name? Uh, the guy who was like, the Native Americans, <laughs> I forget what he said, but, um, and so they, they came out talking about, you know, how this was appropriated in, in response to like Native Americans not contributing or whatever to American society. Um, so I'm trying to see on their website, I'm on their website right now, I'm trying to see if they have that infographic. It was on Instagram, that's what I know. <laughs> Let's see, change now. Let me just do a general search. Um, while you're doing that, so then for the other two, uh, when we were alone and we are water protectors, we could do similar. So like have the story and then have links to whatever other stuff. I don't know if either of you, Danielle or Nicole, feel like super called to do one of those. I'm also happy to do one of them, but want to make sure that if either of you are like excited about one, that you do that. Um, any thoughts? I like the water protector, but I mean, we can do it together if you want to, Benny or Daniela, if anyone else wants to. I mean, I'm, I, um, I guess because I like to work with little kids, but. Um, I'd like but to, fine. yeah, I, I'd like to partner with you on that. Okay. Uh, especially since I'm all about like environmentalism and stuff. So maybe that might be yeah. related and. Cool. I can work on, um, the when we were alone one cool um 
So another question is like, when do we want to do these things? Like, right. like what day is there like a date or a series of dates when we want to put these posts up or anything like that? I mean, obviously the 11th is indigenous people's day, but what are your thoughts? So yeah, the 11th. Um... And I'm wondering just Benny um, to find out when the hard date of the Hispanic heritage, when yeah. they're doing our things so that th our things are not overlapping. Yeah. And maybe the eight we reserve for a reminder post of the march that's happening on the ninth. Yeah, I, I yeah the seventh to me. I give it maybe a couple of days. Um, yeah, I mean we could post about it now and then do a like yeah yeah like a like you said a reminder post or something. Okay. Yeah, it, obviously you know not overlapping with the Hispanic heritage whatever whatever yeah. So right. I think that's one thing we we need to understand is when they want to post and if they want to do like a couple days in a row just to make sure that we just kind of squeeze in there um and not have like multiple posts in a day because that might not uh, that might dilute people's feeds they may not see both of them i don't really get this algorithm anymore it's kind <laughs> of changing <laughs> I can. I had um, a schedule of posts from them that went up through this week. And then I think Sherry said she was going to send me more so I can contact her to make sure I'm getting uh, like whatever the rest of their posts are. Hmm. But I think oh, conversely, we can also say to them, like, we would like to make our posts on these days. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to be dictated by one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the benefit is, you know, if we run out of time or it, we we can just extend it throughout the month of October. We can even extend a lot of stuff if we have a lot of materials yeah. through to Thanksgiving, November because yeah. of National Thanksgiving, Day and Day. we should promote National Morning Day. Yeah, totally. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, when we get there, there's a really cool article. I know Daniela knows what the article is because I. I mean, the, the post, and that's how we, we converse, first and conversed. Um, so there's this um, article by Philip Deloria in the New Yorker, and it's like, it's a really great, I just think it's a great article that outlines like how this Thanksgiving thing is a myth and like how it started. And he like, he puts on like historically like a timeline starting from like the 1600s all the way to like to modern day, how, how the Thanksgiving came up. And, so we, we could put that out there. I just, I want people to read that article because it's, it's great. Um, it's just, it's one of those reads that's like, just like blows you back. It's like, wow, that, that's, this is real, this actually happened. Yeah, so, uh, when, yeah, when we get there, I, I can do that, so. Yeah, uh, and then, I mean, there's also, you know, like Halloween too, like there's all sorts of issues around cultural appropriation. And, mm. and we can make some posts about that and share resources and... Um, yeah, there's a great, um, I bet there's some great blog posts that we could link to from... Um, Can't remember the name of it. There's a there's a native woman who has an entire blog about cultural appropriation. You know, I I, I know who you're talking about. I forget her name, but um, yeah, she's she's great. She has like all and she goes so in depth about it too, like how everything in our like clothing, like how yeah, it's it's crazy, like how many like different like Native American subtleties are, are appropriating like everyday clothing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know that's too bad. I can't find um hmm maybe i can just look her up real quick let me see if i can find the name she used to be one of the co-hosts on um all my relations the podcast yeah so if you look that up you can find i can't, I can't remember her name. it's matoka but like not the not matoka but the other host whose name i can't remember um adrian yeah adrian keen adrian keen anyway but that would be i'm sure she has posts like relating to uh halloween yeah she definitely does keep her in, her, in mind yeah. mm. 
Yeah, nativeappropriations.com. I think that's the site. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's got some stuff that's great on Halloween. I'm looking at it right now. So your friend dressed up as an Indian. No, what? Okay, it's a pretty good title. So. <laughs> no one's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like our next steps are find out from the Hispanic Heritage Month Planning Subcommittee what date they're actually having their event and also like the rest of the posts that they want to make. Um, start collecting like materials or like things that we can link to related to the three book readings that we're going to do. Get a hold of the Bairds and see if they're interested in being involved in any way that would be interesting to them. Yeah, or, that'd be like nice. additional ideas. Um, what else? Maybe um, linking, uh, getting collecting links on different petitions that people can sign, including mm -hmm. the ones on the on the, the legislature the, in the excuse yeah. me the agenda. Yeah. Oh yeah, and finding either finding or making like one pagers or like little like things that we could have on our table for for. Um, what was the name of that thing? That like thing for making graphic design. Oh, Canva. Canva, right? Yeah. There's all sorts of sites out there. It's, yeah. Um. So I'm happy to go through like the um, Italian matrons for Indigenous Peoples Day and the um, Mass Indigenous Legislative Agenda pages to see if they already have one pagers that are there and collect those. And if not, like see if I can put together like things that have like the QR codes or the links or whatever so that people can, you know, grab the flyer and get more information that they can act on. Um, if we want, there are QR generators, the, yeah. like, they're free and we could print out a QR code that we generate that goes to a site that we found you know, that's by indigenous journalists and, uh, but maybe it didn't have printouts. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm figuring. It's like, if I don't, I guess if they don't have any one pagers already available, I would just like make a like attractive looking like thing that has a QR code that's like, learn more about the mass indigenous legislative agenda. Like go to this site, you know, learn more about the petition for, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day. Like, go to this website, learn more about whatever. You know what I mean? We can do it for any number of things. Mm -hmm. So I can see, I can look and see if they already have materials available, and if not, make sort of like quick things that have QR codes that help people access the materials if they want to. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, and would you send, was this one of the ones that you sent already, Rafa, the, the thing you were talking about that was the um, material that uh, had to do with Columbus? Columbus. Yeah, I can send you all that, um, just that document alone, so you guys have it, have it again. Um, so let me do that right now, I'm thinking of it. Um, many and i'm pretty sure i just forwarded to the hrc facebook uh page or, well the message uh the article that rafa was talking about earlier and he also wrote the sum the summary so he shared the article but then he kind of he, he wrote like a really good yeah, summary synopsis you know, yeah in yeah all right so so i have benny daniela and nicole and i have the general wr whrc email on this is that all is that good enough oh yeah you? plenty okay uh, let's see Columbus facts. daniela are you changing your name 
from Brennan or to Brennan? To Brennan. Great to know. Very slowly. <laughs> a lot. It's kind of like a lot of stuff. I, I've given myself uh, a year, like over a year and a half to do it. And uh, yeah, I've done nothing other than dread. Not that changing my name would be bad. It's just like, yeah, all the steps. Um, I just got a new passport, so I'm irritated. I would have to get a new one. Uh, just like <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. I did not change my name when I got married, and I'm very thankful for all of not having to do any of that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. I'm gonna just send this link to everybody that you just I just got the one that you sent to the Facebook page. Anyway. Um, Okay, so do we feel ready to disband and like move forward between now and next week or next meeting? Are we going to meet next week? Oh, yeah, what do you uh, we want me to send an email once I hear back from the um, from Amy Rando and the Baird family or like how, how do we do you want me just to proceed and ask and then wait for our next meeting or? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say feel free to reach out to them and, and ask and also like invite to them to the meeting because we can just like chat with them and see what they're interested in, see what ideas they have, like see what kind of we right. can generate together. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I would say maybe like, what's the word, G give them the like, the uh, cheat sheet of like, hey, we've been meeting, like we have had some ideas, but we would love to get you involved. Like, Mm -hmm. you can make it to our meeting please come or whatever what day should we do the same next like is the wednesday at seven thing working out yeah okay that works for me okay great i will post it um and then we can reconvene next week and let us know yeah nicole like as you get a hold of them or if you're like running into a wall and you can't get them like maybe we can think up because i'm sure there's other people besides besides amy who can connect us with them can i tell you that i accidentally misspelled the baird's name in our notes from last week but also in so i posted the agenda for this week which is public right and um, I wrote like the Bairds were in the agenda to say like, you know, if they if they come to the meeting like that, that having this conversation with them would be part of the agenda. But I misspelled their name and I got like six emails about it. People are paying attention and uh, which is great. Like I'm glad that people are like actually looking and seeing and like maybe interested in what the agenda might be. And I felt so bad. I was like, oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why was I saying that? The point is, there's plenty of people out there who know the Bairds and we can like find like someone to connect us to them. So if you're having any trouble getting a hold of Amy, like maybe I could email that lady who emailed me six times. <laughs> um, so just give a shout, Nicole, if you're having any trouble getting a hold of them. And, and where are you posting uh, the agendas? Is this on the Facebook page? No, it's or like because we're subject to the open meeting laws, we have to post it on the Wakefield like open meeting calendar or whatever. So it's on the town of Wakefield's website somewhere. Okay, cool. And you can get the link, the like, what do you call it? Zoom link to this meeting is posted there and the agenda is posted there. Oh, okay. Um, so, all right, anything else we should give attention to before we wrap up? Oh, next meeting, okay, yeah, next meeting next week, Wednesday at seven. Cool. Well, this is good. Thanks, everybody. All righty. And we will talk to you next week.
All righty. Yeah. See you guys next week.